There's a really nice arpeggiator built into String Studio VS2, and it's intuitive to use, and there's also a really nice step sequencer pattern generator here. Now, I'm going to play a little part with some sustained chords. You can see the notes here, and you'll hear them with the arpeggiator off as is now. So they're just sustained chords. Now, when we turn this on, what it does is it plays the notes here sequentially over and over again rather than sustaining them. So we have a number of parameters that can influence how it's going to repeat or go through these sequence of notes. First, we can set the range, how many octaves we want it to play it over. We have the original octave, one octave additionally, two, three, or four. I'll leave it with one octave additionally. Now here we can choose what order we want it to play through the notes in. We can play them forwards or backwards or rock and roll inclusive and exclusive. And what that means is it'll play it here forward and then backwards and here forward and then backwards, but repeating the top and bottom notes. And finally, we can play as a chord all of the notes sequentially together based on the rhythm that's set here. So let me just leave it at this mode here where it's going to play it forward and backward over an octave. And we can set here if we want it to transpose above where they're played, below where they're played, or both, what it means up and down. And that's where I'll leave it at. And we have a sync button here, which allows us to sync it to the tempo of the DAW, and we can set the rate that we want it to go through the sequence. So I'll leave it at 16th notes, and you'll hear what this sounds like with some fairly neutral default kind of settings like this. <laughs> So the speed is 16ths and it's going up and down the one octave in this case and it's playing it in the order of ascending and then descending. Let's listen to forward only. So there you hear it's playing it forward over and over again. Here it'll be backward over and over again. So we can do that, and we can also choose chords here, which will play all the notes together in this 16th note rhythm. Let me go back to this. In this case, it'll repeat the top and bottom notes. Now we have a latch mode button here, and what that means is when this is engaged, when we play notes on the keyboard and release the notes, they'll remain arpeggiating until additional notes are heard. So it keeps them going even though the notes aren't held down on the keyboard. When it's off, as soon as we release the keys, the pattern ends. Like that. And with it on, it'll continue. Until a new chord is hit, and then we need to press the latch button again to end it. Now where it gets really interesting is with this step sequencer pattern, we have 16 steps and we can turn individual steps on and off with these buttons over here. And at the bottom, we can set the number of steps that we want it to go through before it repeats. So to give you a simple example, let's say I'll set a four step pattern up and I'll have a rest over there on the second, in this case, 16th note. So it'll be da, 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 that kind of rhythm. It's leaving the second 16th note out. And I can, of course, customize it how I want. But where it gets really interesting is having odd numbers of steps so that it repeats irregularly and it'll generate evolving rhythmic variations that way. For example, here's a seven note pattern with a couple of random rests here. So they're not always the same every bar or every even number of beats. So there's a lot of interesting possibilities, even five steps with this original pattern we had, but with this additional 16th note offsets each repetition by an additional 16th note. And this works nicely with chords as well. So that's the arpeggiator module.